what really are the do's and don'ts that a plasma donor, a potential plasma donor needs to know and follow. You know, I'm a surgical oncologist, but perhaps the resources, the time, the effort that was demanded by COVID at this point of time, preferentially over others, has drawn me to it and I'm learning more as I go along. First of all, let me make it very, very clear. Plasma therapy, convalescent plasma therapy, as it is called in scientific language, is not a panacea for COVID. Right. It is not something that needs to be used on every patient because it doesn't help. It helps specifically patients who have early in the disease, have moderate COVID, and at the same time, have probably have immunocompromised status because of other reasons. These are the people who should, who should be receiving this therapy and always under the gui expert guidance of their physicians. It is not something that needs to be given to everyone. I'm reiterating it. For instance, it's absolutely worthless in people who are on ventilators with severe oh. COVID. It won't help at all. Now, that is the people who should receive it. Now, who are the people who can donate it? You know, the United States FDA, the federal agency in the United States, gave emergency authorization for convalescent plasma therapy for COVID-19 and people who have recovered from COVID can donate. They are the ones who should donate. There are specific do's and don'ts which are governed by the laws of our land very, very clearly. And people who have, you have to have recovered from a COVID infection. And after that, you need to have enough antibodies proteins in your blood you know you know your blood is about 55 percent this little yellow clear fluid which contains antibodies and the rest is rbcs and other corpuscles they don't help because that's that goes back back into the donor body we just remove the serum because the serum contains these beautiful anti-covid antibodies which identify the virus and attack mount an attack on it so People who have recovered and at least about 30 to 50 days after they were tested positive. Or those people who have two weeks after the cessation of all their symptoms, when they fully recovered and their symptoms, at least two weeks after that. And even then, we always test you. We test you for the presence of enough antibodies because you require enough antibodies if you want to give a gift of life to somebody to decrease the severity of their infection or decrease the time that they spend in the hospital because these are the two things that that convalescent plasma therapy does it doesn't do wonders completely you, as long as you understand it is one of the things that has started being used in new delhi in maharashtra in some major metropolitan cities in india now but I'm reminding you again, has to be done inside the hospital under guidance. And people, when you donate, you can donate every two weeks, really, because it doesn't weaken you at all. And there are always, for any procedure where it's infiltrative, because the needle is stuck into the vein and you remove the blood and it comes back into your body, there are always low, small risks involved with every procedure. And these risks are almost minimal in these cases. It doesn't make you weak, but you have to be on guard against allergic reactions, hypersensitivity reactions. So therefore you need to be observed for a little while once you've donated. It takes about an hour and a half to donate usually on an average. And some tips for people who want to donate, my friends, please don't consume alcohol at least 24 hours before you donate plasma. Why? Because the alcohol could transmit, traces of alcohol could stay in your blood and they could get transmitted to the people that you give your plasma to. And that alcohol is a blood thinner in itself. It thins blood. Also avoid heavy meals and smoking and things like that before you donate. And who are these people who can donate? Very, very important question. Anyone between the age of 18 to 55 is a good candidate provided their weight is at least 50 kgs and above people below that are if you don't if you have uncontrolled diabetes or uncontrolled hypertension please don't donate 
particularly if your blood pressure medicines have been recently altered by your physician, please don't donate. And if you are you're being treated for tuberculosis or you are a cancer survivor or you somebody who's received uh, or you know um, immunosuppressing therapy after kidney transplant please don't donate right this is these are some things and of course very very important uh, in this country there is a rule that pregnant if a woman has been pregnant she shouldn't donate i mean you can ask me it's a technical reason for that but in other countries, in the developed countries, they can only after they've been cleared by an HLA test. And that's expensive to do at our scale in our country. So we don't do it. We have a blanket ban. So even if there's been a stillbirth or a miscarriage, unless it's happened in the first eight weeks, please don't donate. So usually more males than anybody can donate.